Uh, joining us now uh, is Conservative peer Lord Jonathan Marland. Uh, thank you for joining us, Jonathan. I'm sorry to uh, malign uh, your, the, the esteemed house in which you sit, but you know where we're coming from. Most of the House of Lords, thank I think, you. is very impressive, but great swathes of it are not. Uh, uh, but uh, well, let's if, I, if I could just say in, in response to um, two things. Firstly, I wear ermine, but that is a stoat of a jacket that JJ's wearing. <laughs> Agreed. I, I was hoping I could nip out and change before that the second <laughs> thing is it gives me an opportunity to plug my um podcast which is called peer review where i have done a uh a, a, an interview of 17 peers in series one which shows you actually the talent there is in that place and uh, have a have a listen kevin we'll uh, if do. you want to, if you're if you're having trouble sleeping you got it jonathan um, we will tune in but, uh, let's get uh, to the... the subject at hand yeah, let, yeah let's get to the business hand. of the day nice plug um <laughs> But seriously, uh, the Rwanda bill proceeds to the upper chamber uh, where yeah. it is widely predicted it will get quite a mauling, uh, probably from the 8,000 Lib Dem peers that uh, sit there. Uh, but uh, how do you see... Uh, what do you see happening in the upper chamber when the Rwanda bill arrives? Uh, will it get a kicking? Well, I, I sit on the International Treaties Committee, uh, which is responsible for reviewing this uh, Bill, so we've had a lot of exposure to it. And I think the uh, crux of the matter will be next week on Monday, where Lord Goldsmith, the chairman of the committee, raises the question and asks for a vote on uh, whether uh, this bill uh, should go through. I, I think the view of the committee, and I obviously I'm not going to say too much detail because it's a private uh, meeting, is that uh, we recognise Rwanda is a safe place. Uh, there are certain safeguards that need to be put into place, which the government have volunteered, uh, like the judiciary, the court, um, the reference if, of, of um, the propriety of the refugee that goes there, the appeal for a refugee. All those sort of things need to be put in place, which the government will do, and it, therefore it's quite difficult for us to assess um, the Rwandan situation mm unless you have these in place. And that's what we're going to be asking for. Of course, the Lords will be split um, and there will be um, some very strong anti-Rwandan uh, views, which will be a shame in a sense, because as you say, the Commons has voted. Uh, he's seen off a Tory rebellion, a very modest Tory rebellion, I would say. And also there's a sort of ignorance, I'm afraid, in the uh, in the Lords and also in the judiciary of actually what Rwanda's like. I've been there twice in the last two years because they're chair in office of the Commonwealth and I chair the Commonwealth Business Forum. Uh, it's an incredible country, really. Um, very safe and um, a, a very attractive country to visit. Lord Marland, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, uh, Prime Minister Sunak this morning has made several... Uh, veiled threats about the laws. Yeah. Um, do you feel under pressure now to simply go through with the bill, make sure that it gets through, to avoid public backlash? Well, I think uh, the, the, the Lords is very good at scrutiny, and there are some loose pieces around here which I alluded to earlier, the what-if scenario when it happens. Uh, I don't... I think it would be a mistake for the Lords to reject uh, this uh, bill... Uh, but we shall see. Um, I think the if we can get these loose ends tied up of the legislation, which is actually the role the House of Lords plays and plays it extremely well, then I could see no reason why it shouldn't go through in in theory. But in practice, it's a totally different um, situation. I think, uh, you know, Rishi uh, shouting and screaming and stamping his feet about uh, unelected lords, uh, he's not really one to speak himself, is he, in terms of being the Prime Minister? <laughs> he came from nowhere, so he's on dodgy ground there, I would suggest, uh, and that will be ammunition for those who oppose his Rwanda bill. But how long do you think uh, the debate surrounding this bill in the upper chamber will take? Uh, I, I can't answer that. I mean, how long is a piece of string? I mean, it could be a huge amount of uh, people speaking on it who have from the various um, factions that exist. Uh, so I, I really can't answer that. 
Um, but uh, it will be a very uh, broad and wide debate, that's for sure. To put so, it, so what you're saying, uh, Jonathan, in a, in a what, in sorry a to interrupt, what you're saying there is uh, uh, almost certainly this is going to drag on for quite a long time, this debate. It, it could do, yeah. <laughs> Uh, in its current form, the Tory rebels think that this bill is going to be open to legal challenges. As a Lord, are you going to try and then toughen it up, make it as tight as possible? Well, uh, I, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not very versed on legal challenges. What I'm really interested in is just making sure the loose ends are tied up to satisfy um, the uh, current Commons uh, law. Uh, I'm obviously not going to vote against this uh, bill because it's uh, a party um, project. I think Rishi has done remarkably well to get it so far, by the way. And um, uh, I, I think there's a lot of people in the country, and we and, and he's not unreasonable to say he was un, that the party was elected on a mandate of dealing with um, uh, these immigration and migrant issues. And this is a first step in, in dealing with it. And actually, he's trying to deliver on it. So I, I've, I, I give him full marks for that. OK, well, make sure you steer the debate in the right direction, Jonathan. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Lord Jonathan Marlon there, Conservative peer.